I want to start by asking you both about the genesis of this production. Uh, first, Thomas, I think that you were perhaps surprised when uh, you invited Simon to create a show and he suggested working with Stefan Zweig's novel. And uh, when you've had a, a chance to think about that and answer it, I'd like to ask you, Simon, what made you choose this particular extraordinary novel? Yeah. Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, thanks for having Schaubühne here. Thanks to Simon for working with us. Um, actually, I didn't mind at all what he's going to put on stage, as long as he's going to put something on stage, because I was working for 15 years to make Simon work with our company. <laughs> it's, it's not a lie. It's 15 years it took me. A lot of uh, dinners, a lot of uh, red wine. <laughs> uh, I never succeeded. And it was for me, when I first came across his work in uh, 98, it was a revelation. Um, and it still is, even now having seen the show. Um, and I don't say this to other directors. It's for me um, a, a dream to have him work with us and to have this incredible artist and director, Simon McBurney, to get in contact with the company of our actors. Um, and that was a dream since I saw The Three Lives of Lucy Chabral. And from that on, I followed. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're recording this. I can do this for you. Uh, 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 I can repeat this a thousand times. Um, and since that, I, I, I try to watch every show and I try to get in contact with Simon. Um, and what, what we are doing at the Schaubühne is um, pretty much in the spirit of what Simon did and does with complicity, but with big difference that we have enough financial support to engage a company of actors the whole year. That's a big difference, but besides, I think we have a lot in common. And one of my challenges as a director of this company is to improve the skills of um, the actors and to bring them in contact with artists like uh, Simon because I think this is so important for them when they do this um, very German realistic theater, which I'm doing, that they get in contact with somebody with such a magnif magnificent um, creativity and fantasy to tell stories in a very theatrical, way on so many layers and always involving uh, the performers in the storytelling on so many levels, not only on building a character, but on participating in the whole uh, narration of the performance. And I don't know any other um, director who has this this skill and this, this art and this touch of genius, what Simon has. Um, and so when he finally agreed, of course, I said, you can do whatever you like. Um, and he suggested this book, which in Germany, and especially to me, had a... And, uh, and Thomas was horrified. So yes, having I, yeah. got me to do something, I suggested this, and. He, he said, why do you want to do that? Yeah, I was, I was... He was hoping I was, I was going to do I was shocked because this was a book which was... Um, on your on, mother's bookshelf. On my mother's bookshelf. And her taste for literature wasn't very advanced. <laughs> um, and, and I took it from a bookshelf at the age of 14, 15. And I read it like something, yeah, melodramatic. And um, it even has another title in Germany, um, which is Ungeduld des Herzens, 
impatience of the heart, um, which already in the title tells you, ah, it's about um, this sentimental emotions and melodramatic feelings. And that's why I was surprised. Having seen it tonight up there, I completely understood why um, this is this was and still is such an amazing choice as, as a novel. Because we are confronted of uh, a, a, a situation where we do feel a lot of compassion, empathy with terrible uh, situations for human beings in the world. But at the, at the same time, we get to the limits of what we can do by only feeling pity uh, without action. And I think that's why that was such a great idea of Simon to, to do this show. And, and then it even makes sense in the frame of uh, 100 years of um, First World War. Um, it's, it's, yeah, now you go talking, Simon. <laughs> So, Simon, moral paralysis and historic text and the contemporary. Um, uh, moral paralysis, well, the, what attracted me to it was the fact that when I started reading it, I couldn't stop. It's a wonderful translation by Anthea Bell in English, and it really, yeah, it's a fantastic translation. And I, 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 it was the sensation of it having been written as a single gesture, which I found incredibly exciting, in which it had a sort of musical and symphonic quality in the way that it built and built and built throughout um, to this conclusion where you know what is going to happen, but it's inexorable. And so the relationship between what this man thinks inside and thinks that he is doing and what is happening in the exterior world becomes, uh, uh, of course, it's completely entangled. And so the moment that it is entangled, what is happening outside is to do with these very personal emotions so that you can read it as uh, a melodrama between this couple and his inability to, um, yeah, his moral paralysis where he thinks that he's doing good and he can't get out of it and it draws him deeper and deeper. At the same time, you can say, well, she is Austria. She is Austria on one level, the Austro-Hungarian Empire with its multi-ethnic uh, composition. She's part Jewish, she's part Ukrainian, part Polish. Uh, Frau Dietzenhoff comes from all sorts of different places. Her father, Kanitz, is uh, from a shtetl in Poland. Um, and so this was the image of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which at that time, in a sense, was a, <coughs> uh, a, a, a sort of atrophied in its ability to hold, it, it was, in a sense, crippled. Um, uh, because it wasn't able, it was unable to sort of move around. The form um, uh, of the society was uh, in crisis to a certain extent. And then he, who thinks that he is making his own mind up and discovers, of course, that he's not making his own mind up. As in fact, his mind is created by the society that he's grown up in. And this is something that interests me because I'm not absolutely sure that the things that I do are the things that I have chosen. I can't really work out whether it's me that's thinking that, or, or in fact, I'm absolutely sure that it's not. It's everything else that is coming into me. It's all, it is my upbringing and it is my society that is making me think how I think. So where am I in all of that? Where are my choices? Am I really making a moral choice or I'm just kind of going along because I read The Guardian or, you know, whatever the fuck it is, you know. 
uh, or the telegraph are those my choices. It's not just those things, of course, but that standing in as a metaphor for the other things that are making me choice. And this sort of, therefore, moral paralysis, yeah, therefore, the sense that I am within, it's not an infernal machine, but there are how much control do we have over things? And also, when, where does it begin? Where, where do you confront... Um, the truth of what you're saying because it is it really him that feels bad at the beginning or the way that he's grown up you know the way that he's been um, uh, uh, trained to think in terms of his his thoughts anyway that's what gripped me uh, it also kind of gripped me the fact that Thomas didn't want to do it I thought that was kind <laughs> of interesting uh, I had of course immediately a doubt because I'm I am so pathetic, I'm dependent upon the opinions of others. Um, but, you know, he wanted me to do Merchant of Venice. I said, I'm not going to do Merchant of Venice, not in... I don't know. Am I? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm never quite sure, you know, what I'm going to do. Uh, uh, and I sort of, like, you know, in a kind of impulse, I, just because I'd read it and I thought it's going to be interesting in German to work with German actors on a German text rather than doing an English text translated into German. Um, uh, but 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 like everything that we do, you work on uh, instinct. And although I can sit here and I can make a you know uh, uh, some uh, uh, amusing ideas as to why I should have chosen something, the truth is that you don't really know. It, it's an, it, you have a you throw something because it's there. You know because I happen to pick it pick it up in the owl bookshop in in uh, Kentish Town uh, when in fact I was looking. I'd actually gone in to look for some Josef uh, Roth. Uh, that I wanted to read, you know. And I sort of that's spied. the next you can do. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I think he's incredible. I mean, he's, is yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's just marvelous, you know. Um, uh, and I didn't really, you know, uh, then I read Beware of Pity and I read all sorts of other novels of Zweig and I, 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 I became very interested. I mean, I am also interested, you know, he is melodramatic. Uh, he is uh, popular, but I love melodrama. There's something, you know, it's used as a sort of, it, it, it's curious, each successive age uses the, um, the form of the previous mm -hmm. age as a sort of derogatory term, you know. So now oh, it's melodramatic, it was, it's to do with the 19th century, they knew nothing, you know. But melodrama it. is a wonderful form, mm -hmm. it's a wonder, it is its own form, you know, it's uh, the um, uh, and and the point of melodrama is to uh, uh, you know to uh, curiously to induce pity you know it, it to to make you cry um, but then there's something more beyond anyway that's quite enough I'm interested not at all but I'm interested that both of you um, choose to work uh, you create new work but both this but we're aware of pity and the work that you do, Thomas, uh, is working with older texts, and yet you find the thing that absolutely resonates about today. So if we look at that final image on your screen and we think about that final phrase, I'm not going to get it right, but something about guilt never ceases while there's a conscience to remember it. Um, Thomas, you work with Shakespeare and Ibsen and you find the thing what surprises me each time I see these pieces is that um, whatever is happening in the world, it seems relevant. Your production might be three years old or two years old, and it's relevant today. Trump, you wouldn't have been able to anticipate that, I hope, in 2015, um, and it seems absolutely relevant today. I don't think that with these texts, um, we are not bringing them to our times but the scandal is that these times, these texts were written, are coming to us. This is a big advantage, but a horrible advantage of doing theater today. Every day, texts from the past, I just did uh, Schnitzler, a play about anti-Semitism and populism from 1910, is completely transferable, if you can say so, to nowadays. And that's the scandal and the drama. These times are coming back, and that's why we can do these texts. 
if we would live other times, we would be artists without knowing <laughs> what to do. But as we are living these terrible times, there are a lot of texts from the past which are all of a sudden completely relevant again. And so it's not so much about us having the right nose, but it's more about the, these times coming back 